when it comes to inflation, you know, for the American public, it's heads they lose, tails inflation wins. Because you can never uh, get low inflation. Because if we ever get low inflation, the Fed is determined to average it back up. So if we get lucky, we get a few years where inflation is low, well, now we, we've got to get high inflation to, to make up for that. But if we get a lot of years where inflation is high, we can never get years of really low inflation to make up for that. No, no, the Fed wants to make sure that it's 2%. But if it's 2%, we know it's not. It's much higher than 2%. And again, all of these numbers are rigged. If it's 2% in the PCE, it's probably two and a half, three percent in the CPI. And then you got to double that, you know, 6% to get anything close to an actual rate of inflation. And that's what the Fed is really targeting. They're targeting high inflation. They're claiming that it's low inflation, but it's really a high amount of inflation. And the reason that the Fed wants inflation is because it wants to inflate away the debt. It wants to make it so that Congress doesn't have to cut government spending and make the difficult political choices. The Fed wants to help destroy the value of the currency and inflate away these obligations. And that's what's really going to happen. When the dollar really starts to fall, that's when you're going to start to see the inflation in the U.S. really start to pick up because we've had these high inflation numbers during a period of time where the dollar has been relatively strong. Imagine how much worse it's going to get when the dollar is weak. Now, we're not going to have to imagine that for much longer because I think the dollar is going to be very weak. In fact, I think 2025 could be one of the worst years yet for the U.S. dollar. I mean, it's kind of defied gravity, uh, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's so many problems in other countries that people have been taking refuge in our currency. But I think that's going to flip once the Fed is cutting rates and more importantly, once they go back to quantitative easing, which is around the corner. I think they may restart quantitative easing before the end of this year. But then I think the bottom is going to drop out of dollar. In fact, you know, when Powell was talking about the balance sheet, he was asked what size the balance sheet needs to be. Because, you know, they've tapered now their quantitative uh, tightening. And he, he wouldn't specify a number, but he said we need to have an ample balance sheet. We need our balance sheet to be plentiful. What the hell does that mean? And first, why? Why does it have to be so ample and so plentiful? I mean, what he means is that it's never going back down to where it was, which, of course, is the opposite of what uh, Bernanke claimed when he said that they weren't monetizing the debt, when he said all the, the bonds that we're buying, we're going to sell. So we're not a banana republic. Now you have Powell saying, no, no, we want ample reserves. We want plentiful reserves. I guess that means trillions and trillions and trillions on the balance sheet. And we're not going down to where we were, which, again, is something that I said uh, from the very beginning. You know, one of the most frustrating things, too, about this is how Powell repeatedly blamed inflation on the pandemic. That was it, right? Like the Fed had nothing to do with it. You know, it was all the pandemic, right? Because the pandemic meant that people weren't working and they weren't producing. And then we reopened the economy and everybody had all this money to spend. But where'd they get all that money? They got it from the government, right? So isn't it the government's fault, you know, that everybody, everybody had all this money to spend even though they weren't producing? And then he says, you know, there were supply shortages. It wouldn't have mattered if there were supply shortages if the government didn't create all this money. And in fact, when Powell says it's not up to him to tell the government to cut spending, why during pandemic did he tell the government to raise spending? I remember him specifically saying, hey, increase spending and we're going to print money. We're going to monetize the debt. He encouraged all that reckless deficit spending that he's now saying caused of the inflation without accepting responsibility because oh it's just the pandemic the pandemic did no the pandemic didn't do anything it was the way the government responded to the pandemic that asinine combination of monetary and fiscal policy that was the problem and the fed bears a lot of the responsibility and powell is willing to accept none of it he's just claiming oh it's this pandemic 
came out of left field. That, that, that's why we have inflation. I mean, to a lesser extent, he blamed it on Putin invading the Ukraine, right? So, but no, not accepting any responsibility. And again, the Republicans don't want to blame him because they want to blame it all on Biden. And the Democrats, they don't want to blame him because they want to say everything is great. So he gets out of there scot-free. The only person who criticized him was Elizabeth Warren, you know, and her criticism was asinine. And I could see him getting frustrated by the things that she was accusing him of doing. You know, she's really upset that the, the, the banks are taking a lot of risk, that executives are taking a lot of risk and getting big bonuses. And, and she thinks the government fed should do something about that. Look, the reason the banks take so much risk is because the government guarantees the deposits. That is the problem. It's not capitalism. Elizabeth Warren is right. There's too much risk taking at the banks. I agree with her there. But the reason there's so much risk taking is the moral hazard created by the government that she created by backstopping all these banks, by telling all the bank customers, you don't have to worry about your bank failing because we're going to bail you out. Everything is insured by the government. That's what's causing all the risk. If the government didn't do that, if we had a free market in banks, and I've talked about this multiple times, I wrote about it, you know, in my books, it was a big part of a uh, crash proof or the real crash. If we had a free market and depositors had to shop around because they were concerned about the risks that the banks took with their deposits because when you're a bank depositor you're a creditor of that bank you're lending your money to the bank you're an unsecured creditor you're a depositor and therefore you should be concerned about the type of loans the type of risk that that bank is taking with your money but nobody is concerned about those risks because the government said don't be concerned just put your money anywhere doesn't matter the bank fails, you're gonna get your money back. So there is no competition for safety, right? Imagine if that happened, you know, with other products, right? People do a lot of research uh, before they buy, let's say a television set. You know, they go online, they look at consumer reports, they look at reviews, they wanna find out which ones have a better picture, which one is more reliable. You know, same thing, or you buy a car, Think of how much you test drive, you go from dealership to dealership, you do a lot of research. Well, people don't do any research before they put hundreds of thousands of dollars in a bank. But if the government basically said, hey, just go buy any TV, and if anything goes wrong, we'll fix it for you. You know, buy a car, you don't need to warrant. If anything goes wrong, we got it covered. Well, people wouldn't shop around if the government said, don't worry, if anything goes wrong, we'll just reimburse you and make you whole. Right? We want people to shop around. They used to shop around before Roosevelt screwed it all up. Um, but at least when, when Roosevelt put the deposit insurance, it was a very low number. And what Roosevelt thought was that, okay, the little guy doesn't know which banks are good, but the bigger depositors do, and, and, and they'll keep all the banks honest. The large depositors, you know, they'll shop around. They'll make sure the banks uh, aren't taking on too much risk, except the government now basically bails out everybody. 